Uh, what was it like playing with that team in 2007, those only goal lads that had such, such success? Um, they were like, in fairness, they were, they were top lads, like, and, you know, we had, we had good, good fun and, you know, when you're in a team environment, you obviously have to, it's important that you have a good morale around the team and a good team spirit, and we, I think we had that, and like, obviously the lads have it now, but like, there's a lot of characters, a lot of the players are in that team are all good characters, like the two McGee's, you have like Colin McFadden, Ian Geller, um, Paul Durkin, Karen Lacey, like them, them all lads were in that, and Thompson was there for a while when I was there, um, you know, uh, Michael Boyle, Martin McElhenney, the younger lads were coming onto the panel that time. But like it's, it's very important, like I remember one story in particular, uh, where it was Tim, Tim Bonham again, down in uh, Guidoer in Donegal, and myself and Liam McGee were sitting beside each other for breakfast one morning. I remember it was kind of the nutritionist, kind of first time coming in, and it was all new to us, so we thought we'd have a bit of fun. So I remember Neil Geller, who was captain at the time, Neil was, we all had to give urine samples because uh, to check our hydration levels or whatever. And, uh, myself and McGee thought we would uh, change up the other. So we got apple juice and folded onto one of the urine samples and obviously left with us in the bandit and <laughs> wrote his name on the apple juice. And because he was captain, there was a meeting called soon after and he was obviously getting given out, so we had to come clean the end up. But like, the thing is, they got the bold up team spirit and he had a bit of fun. Yeah. So, no, no, they're good lads. Do you have regrets that you never got to get to the All Ireland with that team? Um, I think regrets probably a bit of a strong word. I wouldn't regret it because obviously, I think for me everything happened for a reason. Like I'm, it's very like I'm sure there's every footballer in the country would love to win All Ireland or any footballer in Donegal would love to win All Ireland with Donegal. But you know, they don't see the lads out in whatever October, November, mm -hmm. December, January, February, but then the hard slog like. For me, anybody who wants in Ireland deserves it because it's a long season, like and a lot of a lot of hard work, and especially in the modern game. Like, you know. Could you tell me the story about how your career with Johnny Gall ended? Your your eye injury. Yeah, well, it was 2007 as well. Toward it was August time. Um, we were on a team bonding trip, uh, and we went paintballing. And obviously it was a bit of fun and the first game, there's loads of different games and the first game we played was obviously one half the team defend the hut and the other team attack it so the team going down to attack it, they're all hiding and the team defending is trying to protect the hut. So obviously when they come up they're shooting and everybody, so we, we obviously got our, quite a number of men into the hut and it was grand and then while we were waiting for the other team to go back down, two of the lads didn't go back down, they had to just obviously a bit of mischief. So while they were going down, we had our goggles off, taking our goggles. And the two lads obviously had their goggles on, steamed up, and didn't see us with the goggles off. And there was a group of us that just started shooting. And it was just unfortunate, pinged off my elbow, you know, it was one of them unfortunate instances. Yeah. And, you know, looking back, like, I didn't think at the time, I thought, I remember after getting an operation in October, I went back to the club, and I felt it was okay. But looking back, it obviously did have a big impact on me, and did curtail me, uh, like, a lot. But, Kind of mentality I had at the time, which is you know, you know yeah. what I mean. But no, no, it was, that's really how it ended. You, know, so. you obviously don't have any bitterness in you towards how it happened. No, like it's one of them things that happen. Like there's obviously I work with people with disabilities, with intellectual disabilities, so you realise every day how lucky you are, not how unfortunate you are. For me, it's the accidents happen every day. Obviously, it happened at least last night's an example. Like so, no, I wouldn't. You mentioned you're working with people with disabilities. Can you tell me a bit more about the work that you're doing? Well, obviously, after my accident, I was a carpenter prior to my accident happening, even for a short time after. But then I realised that um, I was kind of advised by my doctor and by the ophthalmologist that I was with as well that uh, yeah, I might as well get out of my trade and retrain as something that is you know, less dangerous because being on the building site daily wouldn't be, you know, you're obviously increasing the risk of getting, you know, something happening the other way. So I retrained as a nurse and uh, an intellectual disability nurse, nurse and um, obviously working with people with intellectual disability. Like it's very, I find it very rewarding. At the time I didn't know what I was getting into. I kind of had planned to do care work but my sister-in-law who's a nurse advised me to go for maybe try to be a nurse first because after doing care work for a while she said you might want to be a nurse so she would maybe just try to be a nurse. It was all new to me and I tried it, but no, very rewarding. Um, like there's tough days, like every job, like, I work with kind of people who challenge behaviour. There's days that are stressful, like any other job, but ultimately it's very rewarding. You have two young kids now. 
How has you has your life has your perspective on life changed completely since you've had since they've come into your life? Oh, of course. Like it's um, like Oren is the oldest. He's five, and Dara is one. Maybe two now in September. But obviously, they change your life. Like it's you're not the boss anymore. They're the boss, so they dictate what happens in your life. Like they're up at six o'clock on the ball every morning. The clock works. So no matter if it's your day off or not, you're up at six o'clock. So no other great, and it's the best thing obviously uh, that can happen to any parent. So. Are they interested in sport much? Are they playing a bit? Or? Yeah, both Oren, like the older lad's five, but he does a bit of, plays a bit of hurling, a bit of soccer, he does a bit of shadow boxing and um, basketball, so he's very, um, he's into that. The younger fellow Dara, he's picking up the herd from day one, so I don't know where he got it, it wasn't from me, you know, but <laughs> I'll play from the mother's side. Um, playing football in Kilkenny is obviously a totally different level, but how, how are you finding it? Um, for me, obviously, uh, I thought I was hanging up my boots coming to the county first, to be honest, and um, I moved to Comer, but I've actually joined the rival club, it's the rail yard, like, to be out the road, and my reason for that was if I was going to play football, I liked to give it a bit of commitment, and the rail yard lads, they gave the football a commitment, like, I was told to give a commitment, and so I went out to play, and I was actually quite surprised, you know, there's a good standard of football, um, the lads there train as hard as the lads up at home, you know, um, I think the big problem with football in Kenny for me is the structure of the underage. That they're, I think, after under 14 minors, not under 16 minors, like I know our club, the Rillard, were in the county semi final and the game was just, the other team just gave them the game, like, and they're in the county final actually this Sunday. Which I think is very unfair because the lads are thrilling, yeah. like, all summer and the game, they've just been given games, and I think the county board probably need to do something if they want football to improve, but I'm not sure if they do want to improve. Can you see it ever getting to that point in the near future where it could kind of compete on a more serious level? Football? I could see it, like it definitely could happen, yeah. but it, it'll take a lot of changes and a lot of, like, there's no reason because you have other countries like Tipperary, Tipperary are actually coming on great in football at the moment, and they're well in the hurling. You have Clare, who, you know, are doing fairly well in the football as well as the hurling. You had Meath this year. Um, you know, so you have counties that are able to do both of like Cork, um, but I, I think it's probably it needs to come from the top down mm -hmm. and they need to make the changes like our club football for example this year we played the county final on the 30th of April so they wanted out of the way before the hurling starts with the county we're playing the British Championship which was played off in July which is no hurling on so they're not given the allocated time so I think they need to sit down and just look at other counties how it's working and like they're, they're, they're definitely is the interest but I know the reason, like for me moving to Kilkenny, Kilkenny used to be a laughing stock, or it is a laughing stock of football from outside in. Mm. But from the lads that put the effort, it's not there putting on a good effort into like, Not feeling sorry, but you do have a thing that like, you're thinking these lads need a bit of help, like they need a bit of support from somewhere, and they're not really getting it, you know. Would you ever see yourself picking up the small ball? I was asked a few times to play for Clonin with the, the, the Hurler Club, but Sorry, not really, I was asked to join. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be too a bit dangerous with the hurling in my hand, having come from a football background. And I don't know. I, I, I don't think, no. I, I wouldn't mind, but I, I don't think it would be much good at it. Maybe if the call comes from Brian Cody, my favourite. I ran it twice, I had to organise paintball trips. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>